Hey, I'm busy playing Pinball FX3 and I thought I'd take some time to break down all the tables that I purchased so far. First, let's take a look at the freebie. Sorcerer's Lair is a forgiving table with clear objectives and a variety of stuff to accomplish, along with two additional play fields. You can access the wizard mode by simply playing each of the six missions, which can be initiated by hitting the three targets in the back and entering the cellar. If you're trying to set a competitive score, you need to complete the task to collect obsidian stones, which act as multipliers at the end of the final mission. There are plenty of multi-ball opportunities, and hitting a six-way combo lights an extra ball. A solid table for noobs, but some of the dialogue is corny, which might give the wrong impression that pinball is for little kids when we all know that most children are too distracted to appreciate pinball nowadays anyway. Step aside, you old pile of rotten wood! Mars is another noob table. Great for the uninitiated, but also demands skill if you want to see all the features. The ball is easy to keep up and missing your shots usually doesn't trip you up. Kickbacks are easy to activate, but the animation takes up way too much time. Mars is prone to long drawn out sessions, and I'm talking hours but completing all the missions is still challenging enough to keep pros engaged, and the chill music helps prevent fatigue. There are some cool effects like zero gravity, and if you play long enough you might even get blue balls. Don't forget to take a dump beforehand because you're going to be on Mars for a very long time. Tesla is a table I have a love-hate relationship with. The music is great and the shots have a nice flow. But if you want to score big, you need to focus on beating your missions by completing the magnetic mini play field. The only problem is reaching this area is tough. It can be taken at a weird angle by the top left flipper, or if you make a fast and clear shot around the right orbit with the bottom left flipper, you can simply hold the left button and the ball will arc into a vertical up kicker, which feels pretty cool when you pull it off. My favorite experiment is the chain reaction, where you have to knock the balls that hobble out until you get a four ball multi-ball going. You can crank out some big points and best of all, the mission isn't timed. El Dorado is an elegant table with a few tricks up its sleeve. The left flipper has a secret hole underneath and there's a release hatch right above it that spits out balls and can catch you off guard. There's a couple of extra play places like the gold search and saw blade challenges but most of the time you're going to be aiming at the stone idol to start adventures, which is also where you start multi-ball after hitting two targets by way of the top left flipper. Having two or three balls on the table is pretty common, and keeping them in play is quite manageable. Hitting the bumpers will open up the cave sinkhole, which can activate kickbacks. I used to pronounce this word shaman until I started playing pinball effects. There's some fun to be had in shaman, but it's mostly a joke. The top half of the table is obscured by the upper play field, which in itself is kind of pitiful. And the volcano feature is a bit of a letdown. And the missions are shameful. I like the three whirly gigs on the lower part of the playfield. I wish there was more of that in other tables, but it's incredibly easy to keep sinking your ball into the middle drop holes. Feel free to suggest a reliable method of hitting all three juggler sinkholes so that everyone can laugh at you for taking this table seriously. You can bet your life that you'll never see the wizard mode in V12. The main idea is to upgrade each car part five times. The manifold alone takes 12 attempts to upgrade once, and that's assuming you never screw up. V12 was designed for masochists and made by people who hate you, which is a shame because everyone likes cars. The only way to earn an extra ball is through a six-way combo followed by the sinkhole. But if you activate the combo time bonus, it'll be more difficult to upgrade your tires because you need to hit the left ramp or exhaust orbit out of a combo state. The whole thing is a mess. So if you want to complete this table, I suggest you quit your job and leave your family because you won't have time for them anymore. Excalibur is a table with lots of style and substance. There's a bunch of stuff hidden around the nooks and crannies of this wide and busy play field. You can load up the catapult to launch at the castle, battle knights and invaders, or enter a jousting competition. The ball is easy to catch so you can plan your shots if you want. But there's always the option to shoot for the tricky Merlin ramp and lock some balls if you're feeling cocky. You don't wind up in the bumpers too often and starting multi-ball is a challenge. Completing all five night missions is essentially completing the table. But there's so many ways to approach Excalibur, which makes it one of my favorite games. Epic Quest is a must play for anyone who likes pinball or RPGs. Nope. Leveling up your dude is a nice incentive to keep playing, but keep in mind that acquiring epic items is more important when fighting enemies. 
The flipper on the top left corner is unique, where you can pass through the Orcanian ramp and collect a scroll or initiate a battle. You can lock a ball by hitting the smash target three times, and go for the skill shot again for some big points. This also activates a ball save. There's a wide variety of strategies to discover, and uncovering the bestiary and battling the monsters is a great theme. Princess Multiball is a great way to score points, and racking up jackpots is epically satisfying. Paranormal looks like a table that could have been licensed with the X-Files. But instead, we got an incredibly unique Zen original with some stellar features. There's a haunted house on the backboard which extends the game vertically, a flipper on the lower inside cabinet that shoots inwards, and a rotating cube with four magnetic and mechanical mini play fields that unlock four unique multiball missions, and ultimately the wizard mode. This used to be my favorite table until my ball got stuck in wizard mode while the cube was rotating. I almost lost 90 minutes of my life. Thankfully, the table eventually fixed itself. Probably because of the cool music. If you're struggling with the haunted house, make sure that you're holding the flippers most of the time. The magnet should be activated and released at a rhythm to create a swinging momentum. I would be lying if I told you I knew what the hell I was doing on this table half the time, but I still enjoy it whenever I sink into earth defense. You need to hit the robot drop targets to gain access to the missions. Completing these missions earns a medal. You can also earn medals by completing assignments like decreasing the threat level three times and starting an airstrike multiball. Furthermore, you can earn medals through objectives like rage combo and panic multiball. Earth defense looks simple on the surface, but it's actually pretty complex and intricate, especially for a table without any bumpers. Wolverine pisses me off. Playing this table in time tournaments is especially frustrating because if you don't take on the Sentinel, you're pretty much low tier. Tables with high score priority in one area make everything else feel like a waste of time. Like this stupid wheel in the center. Multiball isn't that central to early play, but you'll need to activate it if you want to unlock wizard mode, because you need to defeat the samurai. Dropping the ball on the three red dudes is pretty cool, and if you lose a ball, the table goes dark and allows you to redeem yourself but it only prolongs the agony. Iron Man is a modest table whose wizard mode isn't as tough to reach as you might think. Simply hit the three targets at the center of the table and enter the sinkhole to begin a battle. Most of the objectives are clear with blue highlights on the ramps you'll want to shoot for. One of the missions requires you to hit the bumpers at the end so aim for the orbits. There's also this secondary play field in the top right corner that surprised me. Spoiler alert. Once all six missions plus the side objectives are complete, you take on the boss. It only took me four attempts to reach him, and I beat him on the first try, but I read a lot of people struggled with this. Maybe Iron Man was harder in previous versions, let me know in the comments. Spider-Man is one of the most well-known superheroes, so it's no surprise that his table got a really good treatment. The different events that activate when you take on the Goblin and Dr. Octopus are pretty straightforward, and they increase in difficulty each time you win. You can even fight multiple villains at once. My favorite stage is Mysterio's, where the flippers reverse. You can try turning your controller upside down and hitting the triggers with your thumbs, or you can just slam both at the same time. Super jets will happen, and bumpers are easy and safe to hit, so bring that bonus along with some multiball for an even higher score. And make sure you hit the goblin with a pumpkin. Blade is a really cool table that goes from day to night and features a couple different ball variants, including the awesome UV multi-ball. There's different events that can be accessed at certain times, but it never feels forced thanks to the quick pace and various stuff happening, like the workshop where you can buy perks, the talisman which provide modifiers and other bonuses, or the blade letters which start a multi-ball. Missions are easy to activate and you can suppress Darkhold chapters by hitting the shrine sinkhole during the day, where you'll also want to charge your energy so you can fight vampires at night and collect Dracula letters. The bumpers will trip out once in a while and award you a nice bonus. And a lot of shots send the ball straight back to the in lanes, which keeps things moving. Family Guy is a beginner's table with a clear objective. Light the ramps and start each character's game mode. Once you've played each mission, you can start the four ball wizard mode Family Matters. Kickbacks and extra balls can be activated by performing combos. And there are several multi ball modes that occur frequently. You can also activate dual character modes, and the balls look like rolled up versions of Peter, Brian, Chris, Stewie, Lois, and Meg. The problem with Family Guy is the lack of quality source material. 
Most of the stuff they say isn't funny and becomes grating and repetitive quickly, which is exacerbated by its long play sessions and similar missions. Wow, wow, cool. Yeah, yeah. Bob's Burgers is a nice little table with a short play field that gets the most out of a two flipper setup. Okay, 2.5 flippers, which can be used to activate kickbacks and extra balls after completing Linda. There's a day-night cycle which changes the missions and you're constantly activating new modes. And they can even be stacked. By the way, you can manually change day-night cycles by holding the launch button for 3 seconds. Which is helpful if you want to see the wizard mode because you can only take burger orders during the day. Unfortunately, multiball doesn't manifest itself too often unless you're actively seeking it by hitting the spinner on the left orbit. I don't want to talk to you. American Dad has a wide variety of missions that keep the gameplay interesting, but the ultra repetitive sound clips are too much. I never thought I'd need a verbosity slider for a pinball table, but this could use one. If I hear wheels and a leg man again, I'm gonna punch someone. Together we're wheels and a leg man. Which is a shame because there's so much to discover on American Dad, like the shooting gallery, the ice skating event, the different multi-ball and target modes, and Roger's costumes. And I really like playing it. It's almost like they tested it with the sound off. A great table with fun and diverse objectives, but a big loss of potential thanks to its non-stop blabbering. I always thought people ice skated to escape their haunted pasts, but now I know- Archer is a table designed for pros with a lot of different missions to discover by hitting the bumpers, collecting Woodhouse, completing Danger Zone, hitting the lab targets, or tossing the ball in the trunk. Moving targets, a secret play field, and a curved wall that opens up when you hit it changing the exit of the orbit makes this a unique experience. You can also earn money by spinning the credit card and entering the armory. I recommend buying ball saves because it's pretty much like an extra ball but way cheaper. Attempting the trophy award by spending $100,000 forces you to play more strategically. Archer would have been an even better table if the cell phone hadn't been so damn loud. Drop the ringing by 6 dB in your next patch, please. Fishtails was made available for free after Williams began licensing their tables to Zen Studios, and it's a pretty good choice. For the uninitiated, real pinball tables are much more difficult than the Zen Studio creations, so they needed something to wean in the amateurs. Fishtails makes it easy to hold the ball with the flipper and shoot it into the ball lock for some frequent multi-balls, and the wide playfield and multiple orbits make it relatively easy to keep your balls up. Earning the super jackpots by locking balls while in multi-ball is tricky, but encourages you to learn how to hold multiple balls. And the video mode is pretty fun. If you don't get fishtails, you probably don't even pinball. Hurricane is a fun table if you're a retro enthusiast and are good at juggling balls. But I suspect the average Zen player would be a little saddened by this table, and not just because of the scary clown and murder music. Come on, ugly. The trick is to hit all the ramps and drop targets lighting up the face so you can activate clown time. Combine that with some ball lock for multi-ball and climb your way to the top of the leaderboards. It's pretty easy to master and see all the features once you realize that you need to hit the middle ramp three times consecutively to light up the mouth. We've all had some bad experience being fondled by a clown, but learning how to cope with the ordeal will only make you stronger. Whitewater is a fast-paced and exciting table at its source, but suffers some losses from digitization and poor camera angles. The wavy ramps aren't as impressive as they are in real life, and the transparent tubing is sorta of off. And it's hard to get a good read on the upper play field. I prefer the pinball arcade version of this table because of the camera. Catching the ball can be difficult, and the consequences for missing your shots are steep, but they're still fun to be had when you get down to it. I recommend you try this table in real life if you get the chance because it's pretty wild. Red and Ted's Roadshow is a quick and dirty high scoring table that takes no prisoners. The ramp and spinner shots on the top left are incredibly pushed back, requiring both precision and power. Shooting Ted can result in the ball coming straight down, so you better learn how to nudge properly. If you get your ball stuck in the leftmost flipper, nudge forward and bat the ball away. The ramps score miles which lead to modes and don't forget to collect souvenirs along the way for multipliers. There's plenty of little extras that are beyond the scope of this overview, so just know that Roadshow is great for pros who like it hard and fast. Theater of Magic is one of the real life tables that is actually pretty easy. And it's great for fans of Zen Pinball who want to get into playing real tables, but aren't as skilled yet. You want to focus on hitting the trunk so you can perform different tricks aka modes. 
But pretty much any shot you make is worth big points, which creates a fast and flowing table where you don't have to think too much or be that all deliberate with your shots. Just sit back and have fun. Pinball FX3 features disappearing balls, which I don't remember happening in the original table, but I appreciate the addition. The Champion Pub is a table I'm fond of in real life, but it has some issues when it comes to the digital version, specifically in Pinball FX3. The core gameplay is good, start fights and pop up the curve ramp to hit the dude in the face, but some of the bonus events don't feel right. The jump rope is sometimes latent, and the spitting gallery is always lagging behind the button presses. Were they trying to simulate a faulty machine? I've tried this table on the pinball arcade just to check and it's fine there, so yeah, I'm waiting for a patch. P.S. They censored the poker card game, so instead of choosing which cards you want to hold, it just gives you a random hand. This is stupid. Playing a card game is not gambling. There is not real money involved. But this is where your hard-earned cash goes to pay people to nitpick about crap like this. <laughs> Safe Cracker is a table that benefits bigly from the Pinball FX3 treatment. I never cared for the board game because it relied heavily on luck to complete, but thanks to Zen's rewind feature, you can now game the system, which actually adds a bit of strategy. I recommend collecting 20 tokens first to unlock the trophy. Once you collect tokens, you can start the game in a special mode called Assault on the Vault, which is where you'll want to set your high scores. A great real-life table that's a nice change of pace and forgiving for noobs thanks to its time challenge instead of a limited amount of balls. That's all for now. In case you were wondering, I based the play difficulty on how easy it is to keep the game going, which includes keeping the ball up and activating kickbacks, ball saves, and extra balls. Master difficulty was determined by how hard it is to see all the features on the table, including the wizard mode. Amusement is based on how much sleep I lost staying up all night and playing Pinball FX3. Here's my super score after playing these 25 tables. If you want me to break down another 25 tables, or you want me to show you a full game, start a dialogue in the comments, and share this video with some strangers on the internet.